Sharks that hold their breath? Why in the world would they need to do that? What about fish that are shrinking? Does that mean no more big delicious pieces of salmon fillet for me? Let's find out, shall we? So I've combed through some of the latest research that marine biologists like myself have put out into the world and I found two really cool stories that I think you guys are going to enjoy. The first, and no, it's not clickbait, is literally sharks that hold their breath. And obviously the first question you need to be asking yourself is why would a shark need to hold its breath? And it actually all comes down to them trying not to freeze to death. So the shark in question is the scalloped hammerhead shark. This is a species that occurs widely throughout most of our oceans, but their numbers have declined quite dramatically, so they are listed as critically endangered. Now, this is a species that is pretty distinctive for obvious reasons, but they have a very weird and unique behavior that marine biologists have just discovered. Now, even though scalloped hammerhead shark spends most of its time like in the surface waters, one of their all-time favorite snacks are deep sea delicacies, such as deep sea squid. So as soon as nighttime rolls around, just like we would go and raid the fridge for a midnight snack, these sharks make really deep dives down to about 800 meters or even deeper. They have a quick little hunt around there for some deep sea snacks, and then they make their way back up to surface waters. But these little nighttime deep dives are actually quite unpleasant for them because the water down there can get really, really cold. We're talking about five degrees Celsius. So it's kind of like us jumping into a glacial stream on a hot summer's day. They're going from really warm waters to really cold waters. And it's even worse for them than it is for us because sharks have very limited control over their internal body temperature. So as soon as the water around them starts getting cold, it means the internal body temperature starts to drop. And and they can get hypothermic. You know, these cold waters can stop their eyes from working. It can cause their muscles to seize up. It can cause their brains to stop functioning. All pretty lethal stuff. So how did they deal with these frigid cold temperatures when it came time to make a nighttime deep dive for a snack? This is where the breath holding came in. So as the shark started to dive, what they would do is that they would close their mouths and close their gill slits, essentially fold them tight against their body to ensure that none of that really cold water entered into their body. And what scientists found was that even though the water temperatures around the shark dropped by about 20 degrees Celsius, their internal body temperature only dropped by about 0.1 degrees Celsius. I mean, that's really incredible and shows that through this technique, these sharks were really able to conserve their internal body heat. But with them closing their mouths and gill slits, this obviously means no more oxygen intake, no more breathing. And one of the most incredible things was that these scientists found these sharks were holding their breaths for about 17 minutes on average. Now to put this into context, the longest human breath hold on record is 24 minutes, but that's with a guy just sitting stationary, not moving. These sharks are holding their breath for 17 minutes while hunting. That's like us trying to hold our breath while we run around the track. Nature never ceases to amaze me. So once they've dived down, had their little hunt around, all while holding their breath, they start to come back up to the surface. And once they hit around 300 meters deep, this is when they take their first breath after their mammoth breath hold. And this is when their body temperatures start to really cool down. So their body temperatures go down about two degrees Celsius. So they get really cold, they get really lethargic, they move really slow, but that's okay because now they're back up in shallow waters, it's much warmer, so all they have to do is wait for their body temperatures to warm up again, and then as soon as their body temperature hits normal level, they're diving back down. I mean, it's quite a lot of effort for a midnight snack, wouldn't you say? Now, this breath holding technique to keep warm is a brand new behavior that scientists have just uncovered, not only for the hammerhead shark, but for any kind of ocean animals. And it was really cool how they discovered it. Um, they attached a whole bunch of loggers and sensors to sharks off the coast of Hawaii, which essentially functioned like Fitbits for the shark. You know, they measured things like tail beat frequency, how fast they were moving their tail, what direction they were traveling, how deep they were, the internal and external temperatures around the shark, all kinds of things. So this is how they were able to come up with these findings. And as one of the authors of the study put it, it's an astounding and completely unexpected surprise. The meal at the bottom must be scrumptious or else the energy expenditure involved wouldn't be worth it. Our second story is about how fish are shrinking. So if you've been hoping to beat that 40 year record of catching the biggest tuna, you'd probably be better off choosing a different life goal. 
Now this study came out earlier this month and it was really quite incredible in its scale. We had a number of scientists across the world analyze information from thousands of different plant and animal species, including things like mammals, invertebrates, reptiles, amphibians, fish, you name it, from the last couple of decades. And the results were pretty clear, especially in fishes. Almost everybody is shrinking. Fish populations are composed of individuals who are smaller than their predecessors. And this kind of makes me feel a little bit better about myself because I'm the shortest person in my family. Also, larger species are becoming more rare. And so smaller species are becoming more abundant. They're kind of stepping up and taking the place of these larger species. So you have both smaller individuals as well as the smaller species becoming more abundant. So while a long time ago we had leviathans in our oceans like the megalodon, and in the last couple of decades we've had giants like tuna bigger than men, going forward everything's just going to be a lot smaller. And now while scientists still aren't 100% sure of what is causing these shrinkages, sometimes up to 10% smaller, it is likely related to the global warming of our planet, as well as our patterns of hunting and harvesting. I mean, nobody wants to go and catch the world's smallest tuna. We all want to catch the world's biggest tuna. So all of these really big individuals that have taken decades to reach that size are being taken out of oceans, I mean, they're not going to be replaced very quickly. It's going to take decades for the smaller guys to reach that size. And then even the smaller guys who are left behind are not really going to reach that size because the waters are warmer. Just another crazy impact that we as humans are having on the world around us, literally changing the size of the animals around us. And the moral of the story is if you're lucky enough to catch one of those big fish that are still swimming around in the ocean, please put him back. The ocean needs him more than you do. So those are my two stories for today. If you've heard of any cool ocean discoveries, please leave them down in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you all have a very happy day.